given to me by somebody, my experience. I have done a lot of bad deeds during many previous births. I can remember how I had to suffer because of the bad deeds that they have committed. Uh, therefore, through my own experience, I am telling you, better not to do bad things. You had to suffer and you also create suffering. I have done a lot of good deeds, meritorious deeds. I can understand what a wonderful, happy, peaceful, prosperous, contented life I had because of the good deeds that I have done. So I advise you also to do some good deeds you also can experience that good result. So in Buddhism you cannot find commandment, no religious laws, no religious punishment. Religion never punish you. But your action punish you, not religion. You had to face the consequences. It is not the Buddha or religion punish you. You create that. You create your own hell. You create your own heaven. Nobody else can do that. Human life is the center in between heaven and hell. The other living beings are not in the center. What does it mean? Human mind is so advanced, very easily they can develop that mind to experience heavenly bliss. Other living beings cannot do that so easily. Human mind is so clever, so crooked, so cunning, so selfish can create any kind of dangerous, wicked, cruel thing. Very easy to create hell. Other living beings are not so cruel, not so wicked. They catch another animal for their food. Survival for the fittest. For their living, survival, they catch another living being and satisfy. But we human beings do not kill others just because we are starving. Today the whole world is a battlefield, madhouse. Why? Do you think they have no food to eat, no clothing, no shelter, no medicine? They are not killing others, they are not destroying other countries because of this. Mahatma Gandhi has said this very clearly. He said, here in this world, we have more than enough things for our need. But we haven't got enough things to satisfy our craving. And that is what is happening today. They are fighting because of the extraordinary craving. They want more power, more authority, more pleasure. Not for their survival. No contentment. One of the best advice given by the Buddha for us to uphold as principle is Santutti Paramang Dhana. Remember, contentment is the highest wealth. Rich man is not a wealthy man. Rich man is a very poor man. Rich man is in fear. Rich man's life is in danger. 
Rich men always create suspicions, lot of enemies. People are waiting to kidnap <laughs> and to bluff and swindle. A rich man cannot go alone, must have security guard, bodyguard and two pistols and also how many lock, how many iron doors, how many padlock, how many still he cannot sleep without fear, he is shivering inside the house. That is the way how rich men enjoy life. <laughs> but contented man is a very lucky man, wealthy man. The Buddha say he is wealthy. What is contentment? This is enough for me. This is enough for my family. I don't want to go beyond that. Now that is called contentment. When we maintain this contentment, jealousy never appears in that mind. If you are contented, jealousy never appears in your mind. You allow others also to enjoy their life, no jealousy. If no jealousy, anger also never happy. If no anger, no violence, no bloodshed, no enemies. Can lead a peaceful, contented life with hope and confidence. I see the meaning of the Buddha saying, Santutti Paramang Dhana. Try to maintain some sort of satisfaction, not to go crazy. One day, a king approached the Buddha and asked one question. I have seen the priest, the followers of many other religions, because there were many religions, in India at that time. I have seen many of them. But when I look at your monk, your disciples, I can see serenity, cheerfulness, very good complexion in them. I also heard that they take only one meal a day. So I really cannot understand how they maintain this serenity, cheerfulness, good complexion. Uh, the Buddha gave a beautiful answer. This is not only for the monks, for everybody. He said, Atitang nanu sochanti. My disciples do not regret for what they have committed earlier. They don't repent. According to Buddhism, there is no such thing as repenting. Do more and more and more meritorious deed, good deed, some service to others to overcome. It is not by repenting and praying and worshipping. That is the Buddhist attitude. Nappajappanti Nagata. My disciples never worry about their future who are going to attend to us when they are sick, when we are old, they have no such ideas. Pachyupannena They satisfy whatever they receive. Maintain contentment. Never say, this is not enough for me. Oh, I don't like this, I want the better one. They never say. That is their way of life. Therefore, they can maintain this serenity, cheerfulness, good complexion because of that contentment. It is true. You also can try. Your face become more serene, <laughs> more cheerful, disappear your sour face, your long face, because you are contented. Every day your faces are very sour. Don't know why. Because you are not contented. Now, if anybody asks, 
why we cannot satisfy with our life. Although we have more than enough things, why we cannot satisfy with this life? What is the correct answer? The correct answer is, we have no contentment. If there is contentment, we never say, oh, we cannot satisfy with this life. We say we cannot satisfy due to conflict of selfish desire and impermanence. Clash. Selfish desire like to have permanent, peaceful, happy, prosperous life. The things that which appears are impermanent, change. Otherwise they never appear. So our selfish desire cannot agree, cannot satisfy with these changes, impermanency, anicca, dukkha, anatta, natural phenomenon, universal phenomenon. But selfish desire won't. Take for instance, we like birth, but we don't like death. Uh, that means no contentment. But there is no birth if there is no death. Death is the beginning of a life. Birth bring the death certificate, not the birth certificate. I wrote one booklet, just prepare. Life is uncertain, death is certain. I think that booklet is there. Uh, when you read that booklet, you get the answer. Setting sun here in this country becomes the rising sun in another country. So setting sun is not the end of the sun. So death is not the end of our life. Death is the beginning of another life. So the birth is the beginning of death. Birth and death and birth and death. One day, the Buddha advised Ananda, his Ananda, if anybody asks this question, why death take place? You must say, death take place because of birth. If there is no birth, there is no death. Uh, that is the correct answer. If you try to stop death, you are not understanding people. You are going against the nature and it is a losing battle. In the end, you have to surrender. You are not ready to face fact. So the first principle among those three basic principles is the precept, virtues, morals for the development of our life. We have wrong concept about life. We take body as our life. Biggest mistake. We cannot see the life. Mental energy and life process both work together. The body is the shelter, the house. We devote our whole life to attend, to look after, to feed, to wash, to clean, to beautify to decorate, and how much do you spend for your cosmetic? <laughs> Beautify. Thinking this is, you are decorating your life. 
This is a dirty, ugly, smelly, filthy, impermanent, physical body which create enormous suffering. One of the disciples of the Buddha, his name was Vakkali. Every day come and sit in front of him and watching like this, just like watching television, you know. <laughs> the Buddha asked, Vakkali, what are you doing here? Reverend Sir, when I look at your serenity, your features, your complexion, gives me a lot of satisfaction. Then the, here you can understand who the Buddha is. This is very important. The Buddha say, King te vakkali imina putika yana dhuggandena sarvena, then he invented thing like this, vakkali. What do you gain by watching this dirty, ugly, filthy, impermanent physical body? Whether it is the Buddha's body, or my body, or your body, make no difference. Buddha is not a busy body, no? <laughs> Just like same physical body. Because the Buddhahood is not in the physical body. Uh, then the Buddha say, Yo dhammang pasati. So, mang pasati. This is a wonderful, beautiful saying. One who sees the dharma, through this dharma, he can see who the Buddha is. Uh, this saying is more than enough for you to understand, to see the real Buddha. If you want to see the real Buddha, must create that Buddha in your mind through this kind of saying, teaching. The image that we create is artist impression, it's not the real Buddha. But we worship because that gives us some sort of satisfaction. It is very important. But you cannot see the real Buddha through the idols or images. But you can see real Buddha, this kind of saying when you study. Another well-known uh, personality, follower of another religion, came to see the Buddha, Upali. He said he want to become a Buddhist. The Buddha asked, why do you want to become a Buddhist? He said, people say your teaching is wonderful, beautiful, I also decided to become one of your followers. The Buddha, have you ever heard my teaching? No, I have never heard. Then how do you know whether you can practice my teaching, whether you can agree, whether you can understand my teaching? That is not the way for a man to change his religion. Must study, try to understand, is appealing to that mind, then decide. Then this man said, Venerable Sir, I think this advice is more than enough for me to understand the nature of your teaching. <laughs> if I have approached another religious leader in this country, embrace me and announce such a great man, also come and embrace our religion. Instead, you advise me to wait and study and consider so many things, that is enough. I am fully convinced, uh, here you can understand who the Buddha is. That's what the Buddha says, Yo dhammang pasati, so mang pasati. One who sees the dharma can understand who the Buddha is. Then, there are three basic principles called seal, samadhi, Panya. These are the three basic principles only human beings can cultivate. 